see, like when I came in there, when I came in there, I was with my guys. He was just from just in my neighborhood. The reason why from the guys they respected me was because I never wanted to be down. I never wanted to be crip. I never wanted to be blood. I would see some of them banging, doing what they do. I would just say, hey, what's up? And keep it pushing. Sometimes dudes will be fresh out of jail. They need some bread. I'll be like, hey, here's three, here's four hundred dollars. Yo, go do your thing. I'll see him four months later. He'll hit me back with my four or five hundred dollars. And I was a stand-up dude. That's why a lot of times when I went to certain dorms, I wasn't getting spanked. You know what I mean? But it's just sad. Like, I'll see some impressionable kids come in there out of fear because they don't want to stand on their own too and say, look, I don't want to bang. They'll sit here, a blood dude will have um, drama with this other blood. We'll be going to lunch or whatever, um, the mess hall. You would, They would tell you to cut such and such or else you would play. Dudes would just run up and buck 50 dudes, cut dudes in the neck, all that, catching wild street charts, running up their time. And I'm like, damn, you doing this for a man, bro, that you don't know. Who don't care about you at all. Don't care about you. And it's like, and my whole thing, I had the big picture in mind. I don't, I don't want to come out of Rikers Island and with a felony, you know? The last time I got into a fight with an officer, um, my best friend is a police officer. My sister was a police officer. And they were um, one of them is a court officer from downtown Brooklyn. That's one of the main reasons why I wasn't, these charges wasn't sticking on me. But my thing is, dudes don't realize you come to the island, you'll sit here, you could go in there for a simple assault or a robbery, something that you could do three years, two years. You could end up poking somebody up and running up your time. But check this out. I had got tired of being in the dorm and I wanted to be make phone calls and talk to my shorty all night and talk to my mother. So what I did was I got a job as an SBA. I had to do suicide watch, right? Mm -hmm. And here's the thing though. All these so-called big oppressors would be oppressing like regular dudes. They may oppress like a dude like you, um, Nate, and they don't know your story. Now they go to another dorm, come to find out your big cousin is a big blood. They were spanking you left and right. Now your, your cousins made them a plate, cut them up. I mean, I, while I was doing SBA, a lot of these bloods, a lot of these trips was in protection. They was in PC. I'll see dudes with buck fifties on their face. You know, they would talk crazy tough to me, you know, while I'm doing the SBA shit. And my whole thing is I just want to make my phone calls. What was so sad, they shoved the broom off up this kid and like it was a young kid man he was just not willing to give up his phone calls he wasn't a good fighter but he his mother was sending him money and he was eating good they shoved the broom up up his butt he had to get staples up here in his stomach he had staples from here here or all the way down here they had to take out his small intestines out and rearrange that shit he was taking medication for depression i had to look into the cells to make sure everybody is good every Every hour, I walk by the cells and I look and I look in, right? For three months, he took those medications. He gets um, four pills a day, right? He takes two in the morning, two at night. Yo, he saved up the pills for a good two to three months. Yo, one night he swallowed all them pills. And when I checked the door, I, I checked the cell um, around like 12.30 or 1. Yo, dude threw a blood and I saw pills. It looked like he swallowed like Tic Tacs. He swallowed like over 60 some pills, man. Overdose. Sheesh. You know? Damn. Yeah. They shoved the broom up the... And, and check this out. The story with that kid, his brother was a gangbanger. He was riding in his brother's car. They found the gun in the car. And the brother, who was older, didn't say it was his gun. The kid ended up taking the charge for the gun and sat on the island, didn't tell. And yeah. And they shoved the broom up like on two occasions I heard. And yeah, and he ended up by himself. Another kid, I'll say back in 2014, they um they had like the two they had like the bunk beds. The dudes was beating this kid, they jumped off the bunk bed, was jumping on his ribs, was jumping on his back. Yo, the dudes didn't wake up at night, man. Yo, man, you know? that's it, and, and, it. Do and, get and, that and, real? I was in the dorm when them do, when them cats was doing that. The kid had a pair of sneakers. He had a nice pair of sneakers. He would wear his kicks for like a month or two. This is like in um, 
2017, the last time I was in Rikers, 2017, 2018, he comes in the dorm with a fresh pair of kicks. He wear it for like a month or two, like maybe like two, three weeks. He just gives it to a random nigga that he cool with. He goes to visit, his mother bring him a fresh pair of kicks. And when they saw him, he was getting kicks like that. They try to extort him. Dudes was like jumping off the bed. They beat him up on two, three times. He wasn't giving up nothing. He didn't have nobody to back him, to, um, to back him up. But they jumped on his ribs right here. They jumped on his chest from um, the um, the bed. Dude was over 250 pounds jumping on his bed, off the off his bed on the kid's chest. Yo, the kid died from a collapsed lung. He threw up blood in his sleep and he didn't wake up. 